This is the most broken, buggy, and unlucky achievement run I have ever done. No! Allow me to sit down and take you through exactly why. Permadeath and time trials are two of the most well-known challenges and achievements in gaming. That's where Max Payne 3 steps in with New York Minute, which oh, the cat just the, my cat just bumped my mic, bro. I'm doing my intro. What was I even saying? Yeah, Max Payne 3, New York Minute, New York Minute, which along with being what my ex nicknamed me, is also a challenge mode where you begin every chapter with one minute on the clock. Every kill grants you a few additional seconds, and if you die, you have to restart the whole chapter. That's difficult enough, right? And only 0.49% of players have the achievement for completing every New York Minute chapter. It does get a whole lot worse though. In steps New York Minute Hardcore, where you have to do exactly the same thing, but rather than chapter-based permadeath, it's the entire game. If you die at any point, you have to restart the entire game again and potentially lose hours of progress because this game isn't exactly short. Couple all that with the multiple game-breaking bugs that can crash your game, soft lock it at cutscenes, put you in infinite loading screens, and spawn the wrong number of enemies, and you have the Shadows Rush Me achievement from Max Payne 3. Before I could even start my New York Minute run to prepare myself for New York Minute Hardcore, I first had to let my yoga instructor Diego blow my back out to de-stress and then complete the game on hard difficulty. Well, it's not actually a requirement to complete it on hard, but it does you a huge favour down the line. And boy, did I need this first playthrough more than a rich white woman needed a peloton that she uses once a year. Because my aim was worse than me in the pub toilet after a few beers, and it also allowed me to figure out all of the stupid ways I could get instantly game overed. Fuck. <laughs> It would also let me learn the patterns of the game like enemy spawn locations as they always spawn in the same place every time in the same number. That is until the game bugs out and they don't, but we'll see more of that later on. <laughs> With this I could also learn pill locations, as they would be vital to my survival. You see when this little dude in the corner fills up completely red, if you have no pills, it's Jova. If you do have pills however, you can go in the last stand, where you have a few seconds to shoot the person who shot you to stay alive. This may sound great, but as we will come to learn, it's not always a guarantee for survival due to many different painful factors. I finished my first playthrough and had a great time. The story took us on the ups and downs of Max dealing with addiction, friendships broken, and wholesome family time. I did die quite a few times, which wasn't a great sign, but this was my first time playing the game in 10 years, so surely it wouldn't be that bad, right? <laughs> right? Now it was time to play each chapter individually on New York Minute, and I'm gonna be honest here lads, I was on fire. You know how I said earlier playing it on hard was worth it? Well, it was worth it because New York Minute is actually on normal difficulty, so I had more bullet time and took less damage, so it felt much easier. The closest thing I can compare it to was when I played in my local disability charity football match. The centre back pairing were both in wheelchairs and the goalkeeper had no arms. I smashed home a hat trick in 5 minutes, they were truly no match for my athletic prowess. Just because I was smashing through New York Minute doesn't mean I couldn't make mistakes though, like shooting the girl I'm supposed to be protecting directly in the face. Oh no! <laughs> I got through the rest of the mode relatively stress-free and got a platinum time on most of the chapters, so with that I finally felt ready for the real challenge. It was time for... We kick things off at a party where I'm supposed to be protecting a family, but not even five minutes in here, some gang busts in and tries to kill everyone. To get even more immersed in my first run, I shaved my head, became an alcoholic, and started diving around my house in slow motion so I could really feel like Max Payne. The first chapter is very simple. It gets you up to speed with the mechanics of the game, and there's nowhere to really fail. I saved Mr. Bronco from being kidnapped, and it was on to chapter two, where things get a little bit more intense. The three kids of the family I'm protecting, Giovanna, Fabiana, and Marcello, are out on the session again the next night, and surprise surprise, the same people are back to attempt to snatch them up again. You'd think they would have learned something from the day before, I mean a dude on a motorbike tried to kidnap me when I was 8, and I didn't leave the house for 7 years. But to each their own I guess. The chapter starts out pretty easy, lots of shooting, lots of killing, but pretty much no pressure. That is until we get to the helicopter overwatch segment. There's a few moments in the campaign where you have to provide overwatch for others and make sure enemies don't reach them. If you fail to do this, you get hit with an instant game over. No second chances, no last stand 
The Ron is cooked. So, as you can imagine, my cheeks were clenched so hard I could probably pick up my chair with them. Not because failing the run now would have some massive consequence or be a huge loss of time, but because I have to post it to YouTube, and dying on chapter 2 is more embarrassing than CM Punk's UFC career. I successfully passed the Overwatch, and now get thrown into another instant game over where you enter bullet time and have to shoot a rocket before it hits you. Oh my fucking god. Jesus Christ. Fortunately, the rest of the chapter was easy enough, and we saved one of the sisters from the kidnappers. The other was still missing, and it was our job to find her. And find her, we did. Not. At least not yet, anyway, as we made our way to a football stadium and in exchange with the kidnappers. We bring them $3 million, they bring us Fabiana. As the deal is going down, Chris Kyle pops up out of the rafters and snipes Max in the arm. Who'd have guessed Chris Kyle is a Corinthians Ultra? So everything falls apart from here on out as we work our way through the stadium, fighting the gang, and the difficulty takes a devious spike in this chapter. We learn that the other people in the stadium who sniped at us earlier are military level. They're wearing body armor, so it means that headshots were now more vital than ever. We took the fight to the stands where I was nervous because there's so many enemies to deal with and the stands offered about as much protection as putting a condom on your balls. I could feel the choke coming, but luckily- good lord, why did I say coming like that? Coming, that's so much emphasis. I could feel the choke coming, but luckily- <laughs> but luckily I made it through. However, the stress levels didn't go down yet, as we had another Overwatch segment, only this time it was with a sniper rifle, while our boy Passos made his way through the stands too. I felt pretty confident though, as I got the achievement in another run for not missing a shot on this part, and I also threw away my school grades to play MW2 sniper lobbies all night, so this was a breeze for me. What isn't a breeze, however, is the three minute unskippable cutscene that follows this, so I decided to use the time wisely and smash out a quick one to reduce the stress levels. Following this, we just had to kill the rest of the folk in the stadium, which was fairly simple, and I made it out of chapter 3 with nearly 8 minutes banked, but still no Fabiana. Chapter 4 is a flashback chapter where we learn how Passos recruited Max to do this job. In the middle of Max dealing with his mental health, like all men should, bottling it up and drinking it away, a few mouthy locals bust in and start waving a gun around. Max shoots one of them, but it turns out to be the son of a local mob boss. An entire mob now coming after us, coupled with the fact that we were in New Jersey, meant I wanted to get out of here as fast as possible. And luckily, this chapter doesn't offer much threat. Apart from the end here, where I was low on health, had no pills, and was being rushed by a load of dudes with funny mob accents. Like a firstborn in China, however, I was spared, and made it out of there with 12 minutes to my name. But things? We're about to get a whole lot harder. Chapter 5. We were back in the present day in some South American country, searching for Fabiana and hopefully doing a little bit of blow. It's a cultural thing. Everyone does blow in South America. It's actually racist if you go there and don't do it. This chapter had caused me the most pain out of any in the early to mid game. Going into this chapter I had the shakes, like a South American with no coke, but locked in and tried my absolute hardest to get over my biggest hurdle so far. And to say I would locked in would be an understatement, as I made it through the first few waves of enemies pretty much unscathed, having used no pills. I knew the bigger challenge was coming, but I was just on form. Even making it through the harder parts, like the warehouse fight and the fight right after that, having used just one bottle of pills and doing it in good time. So with that, I had made it to the dock section, the real challenge of chapter 5. Not only do they spawn in front of you, to your left, to your right, behind you, they also come flying past on a drive-by boat. A, a boat by? A sail by? I, I don't know. Your head has to be on a swivel like Prime Iniesta, and you cannot accidentally fall in the water because it's an instant game over. I mean, would it really be a Rockstar game if the main protagonist wasn't capable of a simple breaststroke? True to form though, I smashed it. This was smoother than a Brazilian wax, and the relief I felt after this was marvellous, as I knew the next part was a free ticket. An on-rails boat section that offers up nothing to worry about, as long as you hit your shots. Well. That is, all the shots apart from the shot that I landed on Fabiana's face earlier. A general rule I've learned is just to never shoot it on the face unless I ask. So, chapter 6. With 17 minutes on the clock I was feeling good. Maybe a little too good. And I needed a heat check. Well, Rockstar was here to provide me with that heat check, but not before chapter 6 part 1, which was another challenging one. We went back to Rodrigo to tell him that we still haven't found his daughter Fabiana, but in the middle of all this his office gets attacked. This chapter taking place in an office is a huge part of the challenge, due to there being so much cover and so many objects to get in the way. Not to mention, the cover was flimsier than a newborn baby, so you couldn't hide behind it for long. 
You also couldn't really run the risk of going into last hand here, as there was so much cover, it was likely your shot would be blocked by some piece of office furniture. A fucking IKEA desk accessory could be the difference between surviving your run and failing your run. Your best bet here is to be fast and aggressive, like Johnny Sins himself when he's in an office setting. So I made it through the hard part, just like Johnny would himself. <laughs> this time, once I get downstairs, I actually shoot the driver in the face so I don't get Paul Walkered, and finish out the chapter by taking out the big armoured boy. Making it this far on my first run I was proud, and showing no signs of slowing down. I was thinking things like, could I do it on my first run? Could I prove to my dad that I'm finally good at something? Could this be the moment my life turns around? Well, we will never know what could have been on this run, due to what happens next. Um, I'm starting to get worried. This is this has been loading for a long, long time. No, oh, please don't do this to me, man. I'm actually scared now. No! <sighs> Alright, I went to make a coffee to make myself feel better. I also Xbox homed, so if it has actually gone through, it should have paused the game. Okay, yeah, it's not. Uh, I haven't even died, dude! I haven't done anything wrong! I'm just gonna sit with this for the next little bit and hope that something happens. A few moments later. It's been like, I think it's been like nearly 40 minutes. <laughs> I think it's time to give it up, bro. Rather than just quitting the game. Can I like quick resume it if I like hop on Persona 3 Reload? Ha! <laughs> Persona 3! <3. laughs> Alright, back on Max Payne 3. Quick resume. Go on. You know you want to. Uh, no? Okay. Run number one, you were fun while you lasted. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Fuck! Dude, that hurts so much, man. Yep, my first run had tragically ended due to a bug. An infinite loading screen. Rockstar hit me with that heat check in the cruelest way possible. But I didn't let it defeat me. I jumped right in for another run because you know what they say? Lightning doesn't strike twice. But this is where we froze last time, so please pray that we do not freeze again. Woo, let's go! All right. Finally, I was back where I rightfully belonged, part two of chapter six, and had no more but. Oh, oh my god, there's another guy. Why, why did I, why did I, what, what, what the fuck, no way. You gotta be fucking kidding me, bro. Why did I only think there was three of them? Oh, no. Why was there another guy? I swear there's only three of them there. Bro, I need to go back and watch footage. I'm sure there's only three of them that spawn. I, I, dude, look at this shit. Look at this shit. I don't know. One, two. Wait for it. Three. No one else. Three people. Why was there four that time? Oh my god. Fuck, dude. I'm so annoyed. This was ridiculous. Two runs ended due to bugs. I needed a way to keep track of this. So welcome to the Max Payne 3 death chart. Here I will tally up my deaths, putting them all into one of three categories. I think it's fair to classify both of those deaths under bullshit bugs. What's the next death, you ask? Well, it would be crazy for my first three runs ending all due to bugs, right? I don't think you'd be watching this video right now if they did, as I probably would have done something like washing the dishes or doing the laundry, you know, something more fun than playing this game. Well, it's lucky, because my third attempt actually ended due to a standard death. A dumb one at that. I was completely not focused and made awful decisions. We'll slot that one under the next category, which I'm just naming Enemy AI. Simple deaths just to dying through the game naturally. So, what's the third category, you ask? Well. Let's find out, shall we? My fourth run had started, and not only did I have the stress of failing, I also now had the stress of finding an all new bug that stops me from progressing. Knowing these opening chapters pretty well, I breezed through, until I made it to the cursed chapter six part two. Luck was, however, on my side today, as for the first time, I managed to complete it bug free and make it to chapter seven. We're in Sao Paulo, still trying to find Fabiana, only now Max has gotten serious about it. He's quit the drink and shaved his head, despite having an impressive hairline for a guy that's approaching his fifties. I've long said that the scariest men on the planet are men with good hairlines that still choose to rock a bald head. There's nothing more intimidating than actively choosing to be bald. 
Speaking of scary, this chapter is a scary one because it's the longest in the game. I have no evidence to back up that claim or research, but it just feels longer, all right? So I'm, so I'm, I'm gonna go with it. This is the longest chapter in the game. It was one I had died quite a few times on other runs, but honestly, it's not that bad once you learn where all the pill locations are. This chapter is loaded with pills. They're very generous with how many pills you get here, so you can basically just rambo through the whole chapter. So you bet once I learned that, I ran through this Brazilian hood like a juiced up Russian lad at the Olympics. Chapter eight was here and it was another flashback to escaping the mob dudes with funny accents. It was a long one too, so this chapter 7 and 8 block really feels like such a slump. Not in game quality, but it's at that midpoint. If you make it through these, you can see the finish line, you can see the light, and if you die here, it's most deflating, because <laughs> most deflating, I'm speaking like a Victorian child. Take me to see the sea one last time. Speaking of dying actually, I had my cheeks on lockdown due to a close call here with a sniper that Pazos was supposed to be distracting, when suddenly he decided he wanted a little bit of max. Oh, what the fuck? Oh my god. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Shit myself, I've never had that happen before. I've never had the sniper target me on that part, no matter what I've done, if I've gone straight or left or right, he's never targeted me before. The rest of the chapter is pretty straightforward if you play your cards right and know when to slow down. That is until the end, when stress levels are once again bumped up, as you have to protect Pazos as he's injured, and the mob tries to reach him. And if they do, it's game over. They all beeline it for him, but we do our job and get the chapter finished. Chapter 9 after two long chapters is straightforward and quick. The biggest challenge being the new enemy type that now wear helmets, so you have to shoot them twice in the head for a headshot. Other than that, this chapter was more for narrative than anything else, as finally, after a search that felt longer than the search for Madeline McCann, we found Fabiana. We also found Marcelo too, who I thought was safe and sound at home last time I checked, but no, he's he's here. And well, he's um, he, he's seen better days. With Marcelo looking like my bagel that I left in the toaster for too long, we push on to chapter 10 with Fabiana. This chapter was all about protecting Fabiana, as I don't think it would look great on our performance review if we saved her and then lost her within the same 24 hours. Luckily, it's another chapter that's on the shorter side, with the most annoying part being the multiple unskippable cutscenes where she just yaps. Like I get it, she just watched her brother get burned to a crisp, but work through that with your therapist, not me. After all that yapping, we get Fabiana to drive the bus so we can get out of here. It was an on-rail section, but but unlike the others, my cheeks were pretty relaxed, as I think it's harder to die here than it is to survive. That is if you survive Fabiana's driving skills, as she doesn't exactly do a lot for women drivers. Ten chapters were in the back. With 33 minutes saved up, four chapters to go, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't starting to feel a little tense heading into the final act of the game, especially as I'd had my troubles of chapter 11 on both my hard and New York Minute playthroughs. But true to the form of this run, I didn't have a thing to worry about. We were in another flashback, this time on a boat where things went south. I'm pretty sure the boat was heading north, but I mean things went badly. God, that might be the worst joke I've ever made. I found myself getting overwhelmed with the amount of people you have to fight here, but as I know I had a lot of time, I was simply just patient. I used the cover provided, as there's a lot of it, and I didn't rush anything. It was the opposite of what my tactics are in the bedroom, but nonetheless, the confidence here carried me all the way through to chapter 12. This sees us back with Max in the present day, who is at some abandoned building where the government is harvesting human organs and selling them on some kind of black market. Yeah, that's what would have happened to Fabiana if we didn't save her, so maybe it's a good thing Marcelo got flame grilled earlier. I mean, I mean, burnt alive or having your organs harvested. They both still sound like more fun than living a week off Eddie Abu's diet. You get a grenade launcher at the start of the chapter, so you can shred through the opening with ease. I take a mid-session break to grab a banana and refill my water, because I know I'm in for the long haul here. I know I'm making it to the end, so I need to be properly fueled for this run, as one mistake can destroy it all. Okay, I've died here before on my New York Minute run, so this is going to be scary, because it's a one-shot and you are dead. Like, that's it. You are dead. No. Second? <sighs> <laughs> I just said, I just said about it. No second chances. You miss a shot, that's it. You're dead, and I miss my shot by quite some margin. <laughs> so now the death tally looked like this. Bugs 2, enemy AI 2, and still that last category we haven't seen yet. So I guess it was time to get into my fifth run to find out exactly what that is. This run was near identical to my previous one. So close in fact that there was just 22 seconds difference between where I died last time and getting there again on this run. This time however, the sniping went a lot better because I remembered an essential part to success. Bullet time. I didn't use bullet time for any of my runs 
at this part, I don't know, uh, what am I doing? Anyway, it didn't matter now, but it was just frustrating, and I felt stupid. But not as stupid as I felt when I left behind the sniper for a shotgun, as having the sniper here is essential to success at the end of the chapter. After you plant a load of bombs in the building because jet fuel doesn't melt steel beams, we make our way to the roof and detonate the explosives to put an end to this organ harvesting. Maybe that's how Brazil produces such good footballing talent. They're all Frankenstein from different people to create the ultimate player. That would also explain why they're all so injury prone. I think I may have just cracked a new conspiracy theory. Anyway, that leads us into the final fight on the rooftop, where due to the explosives, the building tremors every few seconds, making you completely surrender control and succumb to whatever Max Payne 3's ragdoll engine wants you to do. While up here I get downed into last stand, meaning I now have only one painkiller left going into the final group. I was more nervous here than I was the first time I googled boobies on the family computer. Mm, mm, fuck me, fuck me, building stop shaking. Oh no, this is bad. Oh no. Oh no, take cover, Max. Oh! Jesus Christ, I nearly bowled that so hard. <laughs> and that is why keeping the sniper is essential there, because you can one shot the big armored boy, but somehow I made it out by the skin of my cheeks, and I was on to the second to last chapter and the most challenging chapter in the entire game. We're undercover taking out this corrupt police force from the inside out. This chapter is brutal, not only for the cell conditions, but because everyone is armoured to the teeth, and Max is just out here rocking a white shirt with dress shoes. This run would probably be a lot easier if he decided to at least wear a bulletproof vest and a cup protector, but no, my boy is straight raw dogging it. Outside of the police station, we come across an armoured truck, which lays down fire while you hide behind a wall, and you have to wait for an opening to fire a rocket launcher and take it out. This is where we will see why giving me a rocket launcher on a permadeath run is an awful idea. Boom. Okay, glad I hit that. Let's move forward. Look at this one. Hide right behind my cover again. No! No, 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 no. No. Brother, you cannot be serious. I do it to myself. Why did I use the rocket launcher? There was no need, it's just excessive for me to use the rocket launcher there, but I've used it every other time and never had a problem. Oh my God, dude, I'm so sick of playing this game. I love this game, but good Lord, I've played it like fucking seven times now. I'm so sick of the game, dude. <sighs> so that's the final category, my own stupidity. That makes it two for bugs, two for enemy AI, 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 AI enemy AI, and one for my dumb ass. On my sixth run, I thought, surely luck had to be on my side at some point. From the start, it really felt like that. I was having my best run so far. I felt sharp, I was racking up great time, and I had no close encounters. I felt like I'd gone from the 22-23 season Kobe White to the 23-24 season Kobe White. Rockstar, however, definitely didn't feel like this was the one. As I started chapter seven, everything was normal. I was handing out pain, and then I reached a moment where a cutscene was supposed to trigger. The cutscene did not trigger. It did not consent. It said no, not today. Today is not your day, George. No, man. I can't find anyone else who's had this bug. I can find other cutscene bugs on other chapters, but not this specific one. I mean, the only fix is probably just to to restart the chapter, but I can't restart the chapter, I have to restart the entire game. No matter what I did, what I tried, I could not get the cutscene to trigger, and it soft locked my game, leaving me with only one choice. Oh, that's <laughs> never one ending due to a bug. Thanks Max Payne, I appreciate it. I was pretty deflated at this point. Bugs were leading the way, and had ended three of my six runs so far. I thought burning my fingertips on my bowl when heating up my morning oats would be the worst thing to happen to me this week, but I was wrong. Max Payne 3 would be the worst thing to happen to me this week. I needed a break. I needed some luck. I just needed something. And it was something that I was given. On my seventh run, the start of chapter five, I had something happen that never had happened before. I took out the first two geezers and turned the corner to this. What the fuck? What the fuck? Again, bro, it's happened again. What, 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 are these, what are these weird bugs, dude? What is with this game and bugs? There's never more people there than the two people that spawn on the car. In my, what, six or seven times that I've played this chapter, dude. There's never three people here. There's never even one person there. What are they all doing there? In hindsight, I really should have seen that as a sign of things to come and just ended my run here so I could get off for the rest of the day and have a cry fap in peace.
But no, I had to keep going and we got to the cursed chapter 6 part 2 where I had the same infinite loading screen happen to me again. Nah, this has taken an abnormally long time to load. The same chapter. The same chapter! There's no way, bro. There's no fucking way. I am losing my mind trying to do this permadeath run. Oh, I'm out. Looks like another restart for the boys. <laughs> With Bugs now clear out in the lead, it was time for the others to make up a little bit of ground over the next couple of runs, due to me playing a little sloppy and allowing for mistakes. I was honestly watching other YouTube content in the background as I did these runs because I did not have the mental focus to lock in and hear all the same lines and the same cutscenes over and over again. <laughs> God rest James McCaffrey and his soul, but I'd heard enough of his voice to last me a lifetime. So due to that lack of focus, my next two runs both ended on chapter 8. One due to me blowing up Passos with a grenade launcher, so that was another one ticked off from my own stupidity, and the next death was where I went into last stand while holding the grenade launcher, so I couldn't hit the shot to save myself. I needed to reshape my thinking. I needed a new approach. So I took a couple of days off, as I knew attempting a new run would be pointless with how I was feeling. I went down to the park and beat a kid at a game of pick up basketball just to make myself feel better. I also beat him after too. I took a yoga class with some of the local mums where we indulged in conversation about the hot instructor and how we hate our husbands or whatever it is middle aged women talk about. I made sure to get a full 8 hours of sleep and by that I mean I got 10 hours because I'm a YouTuber and I have no real responsibilities. I headed back fully refreshed in what I was hoping would be the final time I ever have to play Max Payne 3. The 10th and hopefully final run had started. From all early indications, this really would be the run. Understandably, after a few days off, my aim wasn't the best, but that wasn't stopping me, as I had the mindset. I had the knowledge of all spawn locations, of everywhere I needed to be at all points. The recording of my mic is just completely silent, as I was more strapped up than a femdom. I wasn't letting anything get in my way. My house could have been on fire, but I would have stayed here and joined Marcelo in the crispy realm because nothing was pulling me away from this. Chapter 6 Part 2 Came and no infinite loading screen. Chapter 7 Also came and there was no cutscene bug. Chapter 8 also came, and there was no random death due to the grenade launcher. It was the perfect run I had been praying for. As my shot got warmed up, I felt like I had leveled up too. My cheeks were relaxed, there were no close calls. I felt like a well-oiled machine. I even remembered to pick up the sniper at the end of chapter 12, and we were on to chapter 13. This time, I moved to a different spot of the RPG, and it went a lot better as I didn't blow off all my limbs. I continued to make my way through the building with confidence, but the nerves started to set in a little now. I hadn't played chapter 13 in so long that I kind of forgot a lot of what it was, so I was winging this. But I was winging it pretty well. I just had to remember to stay loose like a bull sack in a sauna and take all the time I needed, as I had plenty of it banked up. The worst part about this chapter is all of the guns you pick up have laser sights, which take away your crosshair, and I hate them as I feel like I can't land a shot. Unfortunately for me, every gun I was finding had a laser sight, so I didn't end up picking any of them up and kept rocking it out with my pistols without realising how much ammo I had left in those pistols. Oh no, 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 no way, I just die on chapter 13 because I've run out of ammo, bro. Didn't get the last stand because I had no ammo. It's not even that I needed to reload, I just had zero ammo left. Oh god, that sucks. That really sucks. Okay. Another run ended on the second to last chapter, and another one in a tally for enemy AI. This was different though, there was something in the air today, and I knew it wasn't just the off smell of the Lithuanian child in my basement. It was time that I beat New York Minute Hardcore. Even though I just had hours of my life ripped away from me on the last run, I dived right back in for another attempt. I worked my way all the way back up to chapter 13 once again, and made sure I picked up the laser sight weapons this time. I made my way through the COD 4 training mission, Gaz told me that switching to my pistol is always faster than reloading, and we were in the final fight of the chapter. Here, we have to take out one of the guys who was trafficking the humans and involved in the whole organ harvest scandal. And let me tell you, this fight is hell. You cannot shoot him at first, you have to shoot the bloody ceiling fan down onto him. And while you're trying to do that, you also get ambushed by his bum buddies. And if this dude peeks you for longer than two seconds, it's curtains. Beef curtains. There is however a cheeky little tactic that you can use where you stand under his lip where he can't hit you. And we finish out chapter 13. And finally, finally, move on to the last chapter of the game. Chapter 14 from what I remembered was pretty easy if you know what you're doing. I unfortunately didn't know what I was doing because it had been so long since I had seen chapter 14 but I wasn't going to allow myself to choke on the final chapter as I really think I would have just thrown myself out a window at this point. We're at an airport with a mission to stop the baddest of all bad dudes from flying out here. 
He was in charge of the whole operation, corrupting his whole police force and killing thousands of people. The nerves were there, but you know what? This was a lot of fun. There's a banger of a track playing by Health as you mow down his boys in the airport. As I was going through this, it was all coming back to me. I knew what I needed to do. I headed for the trams, fought more of his boys, and ended up on a runway as I ran to the hangar. This is where all your hard work can fall apart at the last hurdle. You get swarmed by an onslaught of enemies while you have someone firing a grenade launcher at you. So this means that you have to save your bullet time to keep shooting those grenades before they hit you, as they will blow you out of your cover, and once it does that, you are pretty much done for. Dying now would do irreparable damage to my mental health, so I made sure I didn't crumble like Arsenal last season. I managed to take out the grenade launcher matey, taking his arm off, so now he would have extreme trouble making sandwiches. Well, I mean, we actually walked over and finished him off, so he wouldn't be making any sandwiches anytime soon. With that all done, I could see the gates of heaven. All I needed to do now was blow up some vehicles with a grenade launcher as I hung out of a car window and stop a plane from taking off, and the achievement would finally be mine. There we go! That's it, we're done! Let's go! Oh my god, what was that, 11 temps? Whoa! The shadows rushed me. 10 gamer score for that. All that pain for 10 gamer score. Oh my god, I'm so glad it's done. 76 minutes on New York Minute Hardcore. I don't know if that's a good time, but I'll take it. Whoa! I don't have to play Max Payne 3 anymore. I never have to play Max Payne 3 ever again in my life. Good lord, what a stressful achievement. This aged me at least 5 to 10 years. Big love to everyone that supports me on Patreon and YouTube memberships. If you would like to help me and the channel directly, you can click the Patreon link in the description or the join button next to the subscribe button for YouTube. There's a few benefits if you're interested in those, but most of all it really just helps me make the content that I want to make without having to stress as much. Of course though, it's never expected. You just watching the video and being here is more than enough. Thank you everybody for watching. If you want to see me stress out at another achievement, click the video that's on your screen now, and I will see you all very, very soon. Bye-bye.